suffer from my underdogs The ones willing to pay the cost Even when we're up, we gotta take a loss Underdogs are always against the odds I'ma use this opportunity to do it for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs I'ma do this for my underdogs Yeah, my underdogs Welcome back, everybody. Season two, the Rec Center Podcast. My name is Kenny Edwards, joined with Lorenzo Parham. What's going on, Low man? Hey, what's going on, Ken? Excited, man, for season two. Man, we had a really, really, really great following. A lot of great comments for the first, what, we did 15 episodes of season one. A lot of great stories. 15 episodes, man, um, learning their stories, man. So as we build on this season two, I'm excited with the guests we about to kick this thing off with, man. I can't wait to – what do you think about this guest we bringing on here today, Ken? You know what? I'm going to say, like, I'm excited because I feel like I learned so much about him since we started the podcast. Like, I knew who he was, but I didn't know really all the accolades and all that. And now I'm like, shit. Ooh, might be the most underrated, but we'll get into that. We would definitely get into that, man. So one of the things, Ken, that when we bring on a, a on a podcast and we talking about Oakland and legends and royalty, one of the last names that stick out is none other than who? What's the last name? Peyton. It's Peyton. It's Peyton. So we got to have one from the Peyton family, which could be the first basketball family of Oakland sports, right? Easy, easy. So. Man, can't wait to hear this story, man. So what they do? Let's welcome my guy, Brandon BP Payton. BP, what's going on, man? What's going on, big boys? How y'all doing today, man? Man, absolutely. Man, excited to have you on, man. Like Ken said, man. Um, we want to hear your story. Like he said, underrated. After we looked up all these achievements, and I say, oh, BP is underrated for real. And we want to know how did that happen? How did Brandon Payne be considered underrated in this, right? From by my standards, by Ken's standards, and things like that. So, welcome, BP man. How you been? Man, I can't complain, man. First, I want to give you guys a big hand clap. I'm proud of you guys, man. Getting to know you a little bit at the gym, Ken. Of course, you know you and I cross paths. Um, I like what you guys is doing, man. Want to give y'all big ups, man, and keep going, man. I can't complain, man. I'm just working, man. Ten toes down, man. Just making it happen for the family, man. Paying these bills and just trying to be the best that I can be today. Uh, so that's just me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So one of the great things we kick this podcast off with, and Ken always asks this question. Ken, um, you go ahead. One of the things I got told Ken before, we it's called the rec center, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things we we'll know, BP, what rec center did you come up playing at? Because I remember you playing a lot at Boys and Girls Club. What rec center did you play at, BP? So I got to start from the beginning. So first it was the San Leandro Boys Club before the Girls Club. So that's where I started at um, about, what, 10, 11 years old. James Harris, my boy Javon, um, Blackshirt, y'all call him Jay Ryder. That's where it actually started. Um, then Javon took me to uh, took me to Tassa for Ranga. Uh, over the 85th, man, and Howard Gamble. Shout out to Coach Gamble. Love that man to death. Took me there and got me on the Rebels. Um, but I have to lay my hat on Bushrod, man. Um, I am Bushrod wreck all day. The old Bushrod spent days, nights there working out, playing. Coach D. Smith let me in the gym, um, getting to know everybody. You know, my boys, Keith, Vernon, Pook, Meal Ticket, uh, Deuce, um, Vern, Swole. Um, that's pretty much that I claim. I like, I'm Bush Rod, no doubt. Hey, one of the things we talk a lot about in this podcast, Ken, is, man, the Bush Rod versus Brookfield rec center battle. Who produced the most out of them two rec centers? And now we starting to, the case is starting to lean more towards Bush Rod, right? Because I Rod. haven't heard, it's, it's Bush Rod, because I haven't heard one person say Bush Rod didn't have gunners in that gym you know and we go from the le- the ages wise he's named whoa and all of them guys that's older and then when you still come back to keith and deuce that's younger like bush rod just had a 
flow of basketball gems come up out of that, man. Shout out to Bush Rob, man. Shout out my Patrick Smoke. I can listen to our episodes <laughs> and Patrick uh, Smoke rep and Bush Rob. So, so let me get let me yeah. get my Patrick Smoke the love and Bush Rob, man, because he also said yeah. Bush Rob uh Rex Center made him him who he is today too. And the things that Bush Rod instilled in, in them, right? Is a competitive gym and it's nothing like it is today. You couldn't whine and play sports at Bush Rod. You get kicked out the gym, right? So shout out to Bush Rod, man. Shout out to Bush Rod. I'm gonna have to bring somebody from Manzanita Center back on, Ken, because if I feel like we get left in the dust <laughs> on what our center was. <laughs> Bush Bush Rod oh, learned to debate with because even like before that, Ricky Henderson was there. Um, I'm not sure if Lloyd Mosby is from Bushrod or not, but Bushrod been producing talent since day one. Shout out to North Oakland and Bushrod, man. BP, so sure. obviously yes. um, the, la the, the Peyton last name, but then even your dad, Mr. Mean, you know, he he's had yes. such an influence on so many guys coming up. You know, for you – playing for him, also growing up with him in the house. What was that like? Man, my daddy, man, man, I miss my man. But uh, first of all, I grew up with my mom. My mom, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mama's boy, only child, my mom. But being around my dad, man, he just brought that that toughness, just that, that security, um, hard, this killer mentality, just that rough, just – a friend, a brother, he just, he was just everything, man, that you need, that I needed, and dudes need, you know, that manly figure, man, so this, with him, man, is this, it's never ending, it's fun, it's jokes, but it's also business, um, he put that killer, that dog to the white meat in your heart and your mind to go out there, no matter what you do, to be the best, and he give it to you, he just tells it to you, like, you know, you're gonna be the best at whatever you do, just be the best at it, and that was just every day being drilled that from a kid, man, just being that killer. Um, so that was just him, you know, being from the South, he put in all of us, you know, all the kids, even before me with, you know, with, with my brother, Greg, Pookie, Gary, uh, my nephew, Zarek, my nephew, Joel, all my friends from Jules, Big Mike, Anthony, Joe B, everybody, they know, you know, he's just that killer mentality, man. So that was just, having him around was just a blessing um, for all of us in Oakland. Absolutely. One of the things your, your, he reminded your dad um, and taking in a lot of people around him was kind of like um, Big Fred Shavies as well, right? Big Fred Shavies took a lot of um, kids in around and made sure they they understood what the grind of what they were trying to do. And I remember coming to San Leandro um, Boys and Girls Club. This by this time it was the Boys and Girls Club, and your dad the respect he demanded just being in that gym. It was like Mr. Payton would go in on you, you know. So, man, shout out to your pops because he instilled that competitiveness in you and your you and your brothers and your nephew and stuff like that. We go talk about ZP, Derek a little more, but your dad definitely put a, a great foundation in for you guys to be competitive in life. Everything, like I said, everything. And I mean, I'm glad that everybody. He was a father to, to a lot of people, though. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody he come around, if he sees some talent in you. Um, you're going to hear his voice. So if you if he's getting on you, just understand that that meant that he carried, saw some promise. He saw a future in you, and he just wanted to just push it out of everybody, those that didn't have fathers. Um, he just wanted to just implant some confidence so he can go out there, man, be the best. And that was just him with everybody, not just us as kids, but everybody, the Boys and Girls Club, Bushrod, him and Fred. Like, we all played on the Rebels together. Uh, rest in peace, Big Fred. We was all together, Meet Fred, Lil' Josh, um, man, it was like two peas in the pod, just tough and hard, but you know that they had their best, your best interests um, in mind and heart. So, yeah, got to be tough, though. If you ain't tough, then good luck. BP, what's the difference between you, uh, the age difference between you and Gary? Is it like 10 years, give or take? Oh, man, me and dude, shit, he, 11 years. So, 11 he's years. July 23rd, I think it is. I'm August 30th, so we're about the 11, 12-year difference. Okay. Was there like super pressure coming up after him, or what? How was that like growing up? You know, following in his shadow. I mean, shit. But dude got dude got drafted in nineteen ninety. Uh, I started playing about nineteen ninety after my car accident. I started playing basketball. Um, started getting some action, and as I got um, 
pretty good, seventh, eighth grade. That was when he was starting to get good by the second, third year. And you know the rule, you know how I go, people don't know you. All they know is, you know, you're the brother of this and that. And, you know, you hear it and I'm just trying to be my own person. I'm trying to get my own name out of his own shadow. So, you know, I use that as uh, motivation, as fuel. You know, you think this, all right, hold on. And then after, then it's like, oh, yeah, you're branded. Okay, okay, okay. So, I mean, it, it happens. It happens all the time, even up to my last final days. You know, every article, you're going to see my name, but they have to throw in, you know, I'm also the brother of, uh, of Gary Payton, which is good. You know what I'm saying? We're proud, we're proud brother of him. He made it. Um, great for him. Um, and he set a standard. Um, but the pressure is from people that don't know you, um, which is good. You know what I'm saying? Because that will drive you or that will make you come see me play. That was always the initial. Oh, he got a brother. Oh, let me go check this dude out. All right. Oh shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, that's Brandon um, Payton, not Gary. That's, 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 yeah. that's how it is. It starts out. If you don't know me, you know that's GP little brother. Let me see. Blah blah blah. Oh. Oh okay. Yeah. Thank you. I hear you. That's it. Definitely. That's what's up. Definitely. Yeah. Wait, and, and, and anyway, if you know you slice it, it's still some big shoes to fill. You know, I remember um, being at Tech and hearing about Marshawn Lynch's little brother. You know, we honestly thought, mm-hmm. okay, this is going to be a, another Marshawn Lynch. And then we see him mm-hmm. play and do creating his own his own lane. You know, Tay Lynch was creating mm-hmm. his own lane. But it's like, we, uh, you know, we going to be stuck on what it is that we've seen beforehand, right? So mm-hmm. offline, G, um, BP, we talked about, you know, you being at Montero and playing freshman year mm-hmm. at Fremont. Was this Fremont State Championship year or the year before that? The year before that, which is a very good team, man. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mike Quinney, lefty, uh-huh. man, can go. Keith Livers, uh, Robert Grissom, Joey Grissom, y'all, I need to respect that man. Uh, he had a – that was probably his best year, his junior year. He was there. JT, James Thompson, Lefty, I think, was there. Sweet Juan, E. Adams was there. Uh, Pop, Pops was there. Lawrence Thomas was there, um, to name a few, uh, with Clint Man, And it was some bad boys, man. Bad, 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 bad boys. Yeah. Man, so so after that, after that freshman year, you were there, your ninth grade year, you were playing for Fremont. Did you – Come back your sophomore year, or did you St. Joe's for your sophomore year? No, so again, you know, I was at Montero, so I graduated Montero the ninth grade year, and then I was um, a part of my AAU, my AAU team, NorCal. We had a, a bomb NorCal program. Um, we had my team, and then we had below us, we had a uh, eighth grade team, which was very good as well. You know, with Ray, Big Mike Austin, Renee Ray, Jocks, uh-huh. uh, Nate Morass, and then I. My team, you know, we had uh, Anthony Woolridge, who was a beast, Joe Barker, uh, we had Jules Milstead, we had Elliot Marshall, Sean Sexton, Marcus Taylor. So we had a we had a good program. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, we was all, whoever passed the test, the top players per se, were going to go to St. Joe's and change the game. And I knew that in ninth grade. And Clint had an option at a time, I, w- I was hoping that I could have got called up and blah, blah, and just be- contribute to the team. But he knew that I wasn't going to become the next year. So um, to the test, passed it, went to St. Joe's for the 10th grade, sounded all good. And that's how I got there. Got it. This, so when you so when you get there in the 10th grade, because Ray Young, who's also with that pair with you, he was in eighth grade. Were you in the 10th grade and Ray in the ninth grade at – at St. Joe's at the same time, what was that? Yeah, we what was that team together. like? Jules was there too, as well, right? Jules, man, me, Jules, Ray Young, Joe Barker, Demarie Wynn, Big Mike Austin, Renee Jock was called up. He played on the varsity um, that year, and we had Timus Small, uh, Pocky Wade, and uh, Jonathan Gordon, and Rashawn Fulcher. We had, oh, Lord. Yeah, we had action. We had action. We had, we had man, mm, sounded good, though. It sounded I, good on paper. So let's, 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 let's see what's that. So then you come. That's a, hey, that's a lineup on what them dudes did in their high school career, man. That's a cool lineup. We was all lineup. on the same squad. Because, 
be that's a that's a cold lineup. And I wonder, like, even when they when they even start bringing Justin Davis and them there and them dudes, it's like, hey, St. Joe's became a powerhouse, but was it through this class and that NorCal basketball made them that powerhouse? NorCal, man, we had a we had a we had a pipeline, you know what I'm saying? We had Rick Lynch, you know what I'm saying? No matter what people say, you know what I'm saying? He was him and my dad got connected, and man, we took it to a different level. You know, we had Chris Rivers. Um, and we just making things happen, man. They had a vision prior to it, man. So, you know, they had connects to the high schools and all of that stuff. And St. Joe's with Laporte, J. Kidd, Adrian Ely, all that, just the history of that. You know, it sounded good. You know what I'm saying? It sounded real good on paper. Um, and we was all there. You know, you passed the test and, you know, the talent was going to be there, you know. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not enough balls, though. Not enough. Not enough for me. This wasn't enough uh, for me, you know what I'm saying? Kind of get held back and all that stuff like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. But talent, no problem getting St. Joe. That's where you want to be at because he's connected to all the college coaches. You ain't got to worry about nothing going there if you're good. So it was a chemistry thing. How did the-, the chemistry was, like I said, the chemistry was good. I'm going to speak for myself. Jules Mills there for the state because he had his best year our 10th grade year. I myself, the coach, coach, coaches, Frank Laporte, rest in peace, um, Gordy, Coach Gordy, Coach Carabayo, they wanted to play the two guard, time and small. So I had, I was the backup. I was part of the second team. Now, you know, of course you got to earn your stripes and all of that stuff. And you know, you practice and all that, but the man was starting the whole year, no matter what he was going to start. You know, coaches have favorites, and we understand that. Um, yeah, so we did. We did. We still played good. We still did good. We was number one in NCS, um, but we lost in the first. Then we lost in the first round, being number one in NCS. We lost to Merced mm. at Cal State East Bay. Lost to Merced, and I'm pissed. Like man, you know, because I felt I could have been a, played a bigger role, trying to be the team player. Yada 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 yada. Anyway, we had a, a to go. We had a, a farewell meeting after that year, and coach asked, "You know who's leaving?" Wow. Didn't know where I was going, but I cannot play another year under behind this dude that I think and I feel in my heart of hearts that I'm better than. So, you know, I'm saying, have a dad and a mom and a coach and people out there. I bet on myself. And chemistry was good. Is this? I, I just wasn't playing behind that guy. Time is small. Wasn't doing that. Not another year. Right. You kissed my ass. No, I got that's too much time wasted. I only got two more years left. Um, and I got things to achieve and accomplish with this college and and furthermore. So um, that was my reasoning. And to this when, day, when, you, when know you what I'm ra- saying is what it was. When you raised your hand, was any of your teammates was any of your teammates shocked by that? Like, did anybody like, yo, BP, don't cut or like they like cut BP out? And then Jules transferred too. Like, did y'all all just cut? So I really, I was too focused on me, my father, my mom was just focused on me getting to me where I had to get to. So I didn't really pay attention to that. Maybe, maybe not. All I knew is I'm out. And they had stuff planned that had nothing to do with me and planned. Now, Jules, I will say that he had a great year. They liked him. They loved that guy. He was one of the favorites. Um, Seeing that, I felt that he should have stayed. St. Joe's report, they're going to make sure they get you with the grades and your colleges and all that stuff. He should have stayed. Ray coming in as a freshman, he was a favorite as well. He stayed. Um, Big Mike, me, Big Mike, and Demaria, who was the starting point guard, and Jaime Sanchez, we left and wound up in De La Salle. You better yourself. All of us couldn't be there and, and prosper and be great it's impossible didn't see it happening uh, when, so when, when, when that you, was it when you when you enter what we will say now is the transfer portal back then when you entered the transfer portal did clinton them try to get you to come back to fremont no i didn't get no uh i didn't hear of any pushback from anybody i mean i got a father and a mama that wants what's best for their kid you know what I'm saying? I got coaches out there that know about my abilities. I have myself who is ready to be unleashed. Like I said, I was raised by my father and my mom. To like, they raised to kill us. So I need the leash to be let off. Let me let me loose. 
I don't need to be held yeah. back. So ain't nobody messing with me because I got a father and a mama and a grandma. That's my parents. What you gonna say? Uh, I mean, I did want to go to Fremont. I did. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it like no other plan for them. I want to be around my homies and all of that stuff. Being around in Oakland and all of that. I've never been to a Catholic school in my life. Um, but I got in trouble my ninth grade year uh, at Montero. Uh, science class, man, it was me, Tuba, uh, Lee McDaniel, Big Frank, uh, who was with us? Big Ray, uh, Ray Daniels. I don't think Pierce was with us, but we had a science class and also a female had got transferred in too. And man, your boy was just cutting up, man. I was climbing with them. And then the girl, the beautiful girl had it was, was a TA. So she would come to class, class and dropping off stuff. So, you know, get me up out of here so we can go behind the 100 building and, you know, we can get, you know, acquainted. So I was doing that all the time. I was an eligible that first quarter when I was supposed to be Fremont. I was eligible that first quarter. They went to Jesuit and I was able to play. And that, my dad and my mom said, you're not going to Skyline and you sure ain't going to Fremont because we know that you can't handle all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. Got it. That wasn't happening. Yeah. So, so, so walk, walk us through this. Um, you leave St. Joe's and end up at De La Salle with. Three, four, y'all that leave St. Leave St. Joe's and go to De La, De La Salle. How did how did how did that work out, man? When y'all stepped on campus at De La Salle, like, did well, you have a chip on your all, shoulder yeah. that season? Man, like I was said, was it a man, chip I'm, on your I'm, shoulder I'm, that season? Uh, look, first of all, I mean, I was ranked. I was playing in L.A. and Vegas and. I'm playing with all these top dudes. So, man, I'm just watching them from afar. Like, man, I got to, I got to get, I got to catch up. I got to make this thing work. So going to the South, you know what I'm saying? Meeting these new guys under the tunnel, being from Oakland, you know, you hear stories about Walnut Creek, Concord, nose up in the air. So, you know, it's a little different, but they welcomed me and mine, Damari and us with welcome arms. And like, we were like missing pieces to their program. And they got a program that's, Wow, you know, with the football and the training, get up at six o'clock in the morning, weightlifting, you know, holding holding each other accountable. It was a whole different scene that was needed. And we walked in and they welcomed us and we welcomed them and their parents. And it was beautiful, man. They once we started practicing, it was like we might, we, we might got something. You know, we had to, you know, get some feelers out there and practice and play a couple of games. But as the year went by, we got confident. We played together. Uh, we was all selfless. And it, it has worked, man. It has clicked in that year, man. It was a blessing. It was a blessing without, man, it was a blessing, man, to go there and, and, and definitely experience and play, man. It was changed my career. I ain't going to lie to you. It was a career changer. How did y'all do that first year y'all guys got there? How did De La Salle do that year? Uh, we did pretty good. Like I said, uh, we didn't win the league. We came a second in the league. Um, got through, got to NCS. We beat uh, Law. We beat, I think it was Logan, James Logan. He reminded me that we did play James Logan at home, beat them. And guess what? The next game was at St. Mary's against none other than St. Joe's. What oh, the man. Joe's? Oh, Lord. <laughs> man, I mean, like, I'm a believer, so it's like, Lord Jesus, thank you. And that's what's the matchup. St. Joe's, De La Salle, and the semifinals of the NCS at St. Mary's. We the sixth seed, they the and one seed. Packed house? Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, packed yeah. It was standing room only. They, you know, packed, so house. packed house. Packed um, house. Again, we was okay. You know, we wasn't, we wasn't them. You know, we still do LaSalle. I know I'm there, and Damari and all of that, but they're still St. Joe's because of their St. Joe's and their, you know, their background. Um, but here we go. <laughs> here we go. So who won? Oh. oh, oh, my bad. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I apologize. So, yeah, we got it done. So we was down in the third quarter. We was down three quarters, fourth <laughs> quarter. We made a good comeback, and we pulled that out. And... Um, Man, we beat them, those, man. We beat them. And it was personal. And to this day, I still feel it. I'm still emotional about it. It felt wonderful to whoop their ass. And it wasn't actually the players. 
it was the coach. Yeah. And it was the coaches who felt that this other dude was better than me. So we all fuck been there. Did you lock him up? Did you lock nah, him up? Nah, nah, nah. This is fucking asking. <laughs> asking. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. And it wasn't just me, like I said, it was a team effort, but I had to make sure that uh yeah, yeah, this is this is what's up. Lo, I can feel the better emotion. than that man right there. I feel like you oh, yeah. cried. I feel like you cried after the game. Is did you? Like I could just feel I your emotion. Cry, like, I was did you excited. Cry? Man, I was mad, excited, happy, thrilled. I jumped on the rim. I acted. A, I showed my ass. I, I mean, I showed my ass. I did because I didn't know. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, man, yeah, yeah. You didn't believe. You thought I was not better than this guy right here. Now I led a team, or I helped a team beat the number one seed in the NCS. Thank God Take we that. didn't have social media just, back then. I feel like it would have been a Twitter war. What, who, what you got to say? I won. <laughs> can't say nothing. Hey, hey, hey Ken, team. I don't think I have, Ken, I don't think I have to ask Brandon who was um, most <laughs> overrated in his, in, his, in his era. I don't have to see who was the overrated player in his era. I think I got my answer right there. <laughs> We ain't gonna ask that question. We can feed us something up for it. Hey, no. Next question. I'll keep it real. You can ask it. Uh, you can ask it. I'll keep it real, man. Since we didn't segue to this question, man, who was an old yeah. player that you played with or against in your in your era? Against everybody, I mean, they got a name for a reason. You know what I'm saying? You have a name for a reason. So I won't call every anybody overrated now when i was a 10th grader at st joe's the guy that played ahead of me time is small whatever i felt in my heart of heart i'm better than that man the coaches felt different so he was the starter uh was he overrated he is what he is but i was better than that man then and the next year and on and on and on and on and on but he might have been a better fit for that program with what Coach Report didn't want it. I understand that. I mean, that's just that's the game. But he wasn't better than me. And I'm going to say that to the day I die. And I thought I proved that when I was able to match up against him in that squad um, the following year. It was all him. Uh, absolutely. So, so one of the things, being a guard from that era, we had a lot of great guard play in the mid-'90s around the, um, East Bay. And basketball, mm-hmm. right? Give me, give me, give me five guards, man. That that used to bring it during that your era. Your top five guards that used to bring it during that era. What am I in high school or junior high? High school, high school. Oh, fuck. I gotta go with the city boys, man. Uh, Lorian Russell, Ali Thomas, um, uh-huh. and there was a third one, man. That 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 caused some problems, man. And I tell him to this day, man, I didn't like this dude, man, because he was just, you know, something just give you, you know, you got to go a little, it's a little different. His name was Al Johnson, man. He went to Sacred Heart Prep too, as well. Uh, San Francisco guys. Now in the town, uh, Ed Wally. E. Wally. Ed Wally. Shout out E. Wally. I told you Ed I could get Ohio in there somehow. Uh, <laughs> so, let me so. So here's the story with this, though. So Ed Wiley and Marshawn Ferris, you know, they always been ace boom. I met Marshawn, I think I was probably a seventh grader, eighth grader at Monterre when I got on the scene playing against uh, Edna Brewer McChesney. So I think my first game was against them. Uh, so, you know, you got to walk into the gym, and you know, these dudes outside, and this big head dude out there already talking. Don't know him, but he's talking, and he's running his mouth. Oh, man, pops, man, I want to get this motherfucker. And who is this dude? Well, uh, kind of find out he wasn't even playing. He just out there just spectating, talking to shit. Okay. So we beat the Machesti block. Anyway, fast forward. I find out that Ed Wally and Marshawn, they ace boom. And I'm playing as uh, Ed Wally, you know, on OMBLs, uh, JV, my friend Fremont, even Ohio. So whenever I seen him, he didn't know. But I, all I see is Marshawn, big head. And I can't get to Marshawn, so <laughs> me and A. Wally about to go at it. But it was much respect because he was long. Uh, he was smooth. Uh, and he was a problem, man. You know, you had to go to sleep at night when you're playing against him. So I really think him out of everybody that I probably placed during that time, because I played him a lot 
we played against a lot, a lot of battles, man. I'm giving it to Ed Wally uh, in terms of uh, players. A lot of good, a lot of great players. Don't get me wrong, but Ed Wally for me that I saw a lot. Yeah, that dude. Yeah, yeah. Much respect, man. That's an interesting. One thing pick. about Ed. Well, Go ahead, Ken. Uh. But when we came out with the oh, list. No, my, my, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I got one more. Y'all, can, can you ask me this? Frank Alaco Jr. Yeah, that's my guy, bro. Hey, look. Hey, the dude, the dude good. Dude is good. The dude got a left to right crossover, man. With his daddy, they had a system. His daddy put him in great positions to be successful. But the dude was smart. He could play. Um, and it was definitely a battle with him and his father. When you play him, you're also playing his daddy. And his daddy's a smart dude, man, at Northgate and all that. So let me not forget. Ed Wally, of course, you know, that's town stuff. Um, but on the other level, Frank Alaco definitely was, it was a bad little dude. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get to I'm gonna Man. get to Ed Wally why I said that was interesting, but real quick, Frank Alaco, the reason why like I say that's my guy is I saw him come down the bush ride and do his thing. So that oh, yeah. that's when oh, I Oh, you wanna talk about that? You want you wanna talk about that? When he came down the bush no, ride? Easter, Easter <laughs> tournament? Oh, oh you wanna yeah. that? What happened? Do you do were you there when that happened? No, you don't think he was there. You well, see, I was like eight it. or something. So, so yeah. you give, give well, us what happened. About it. Cause I could cause you for what I, about it. They, cause they, my memory, he did his, you know, he did really well. But I but I won't say I saw every game of that tournament either. Did you see the championship? Bro, I was like eight or nine. I don't know what it was. Oh, exactly. Well, I mean, look, so what happened? Look, Just exactly. tell me. What happened, B? We, we, what happened? Bush rod, bush rod, bush rod play. Mr. Lock on them, and we whoop that ass at Bush Rod and Easter Turning. I believe it. Go home. I believe it. Go home. Yeah, but but yeah, but yes, what? Did, did, yeah, Bush Rod. Y'all whoop his ass. And he, y'all whoop. Y'all whoop his ass. And he's cool. Bush Rod is like everybody <laughs> right. against Frank Lock. Eighty point victory, but you get your ass if you lose, you lose. You come in there talking hot headed. They had the balls to come to the hood. Which they I made the championship for. game though. Say what? They made the championship game though. What that mean? It, it, it all, it's only one winner, right? It's only one winner. Oh no, it's only we, one. So yeah, we can make the championship yeah. sound good. But B, but did, did, did he did he drop did he drop twenty five and and lost though? Like, did he have thirty? Like, I don't like, know the I don't know the I don't remember the man's um stats stats. Um, but I'll let I'll let I, I will let the public and the peers know. But I know that my team won. The Bush Rock Easter Tournament, and we face dude. Yeah. But he's legit. He is devoured. <laughs> oh, he was good. Don't get me wrong. I didn't say he's not good, okay. but, you know, when you want to match up, I mean, we're competitors. So, we, what's happening? Now, yeah. now, now, back to Ed Wally. The reason I said mm-hmm. it's interesting is because when we came out with the list, Ed and I had a conversation. He was, and even when I talked to, uh, when we had Marshawn on, and I'm like, nah, dude, Tony O'Parker, I in there, dog Ed Wally. It was a lot of pushback on that, and I'm and, I, and so I'm saying like, why do you think Ed doesn't really get his name mentioned by a lot of the peers and others? And so when you when you obviously one of the best say that Ed was a tough matchup for you, wh- why you don't think Ed's name is mentioned more often? Uh, I mean you have to win, you know he's no knock on Ojai. Um, he wasn't he wasn't out there dropping 30 and 40. He ain't no hothead. He ain't out there. You know, he's smooth, man. Man, just a smooth dude. Just smooth. You know, the hothead was Marshawn. So Marshawn gonna get noticed per se a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Duncan, uh, other stuff, you know, hyping the crowd up. Hey, while he was just smooth, man. I'm telling you, he can drive, he can shoot a little big in the hole, and he was tall, long. He was solid. Uh, maybe he was in a different situation able to blossom more maybe uh, but i'm here to say i face him a lot and i mean in different phases different aspects different leagues tournaments the dude was good the dude was good i don't know how serious he was about it uh, but when i saw him across 
a little added in the center because you know his partner was. But hey, man, dude's pretty good, man. Huh? In my opinion, no, as an opponent, valid. that's not bad. bad. That's valid. Yeah. So one of the guards um, we didn't talk about before, who was a guard in your era, who don't get as much props as it could be because they were at the Catholic school, is your boys Nate Nate and. Rick. Nate over in Joe's, right? Because you just mentioned Nate playing with you guys. He was a freshman when he had to play varsity with you guys, right? He played JV. He didn't play as a freshman. Okay, he, he didn't JV. play as a freshman. They didn't. They didn't. It wasn't okay. it was too many, too many players. But he could have. So he played JV. I met dude. I met Nate. Man, he came. Derek Smith was the one that brought him to us for the Rebels back in 1991. Little dude, man. These things to brag about this little boy, man. Like, who is this dude? Brought to practice, man. He was held his own, man. Throwing dimes, can shoot, can make plays, man. Was just smooth and just a go getter. Um, and when he got to high school, when he got was given the ball, check check the stats. He made top team um, East Bay's and leagues and all of that stuff. Got a scholarship. I think he went to uh, Sac State. The dude can play, man. It's just yeah. You like who you like, but the dude was flashy. He was solid. He shoot, he scored, he lead a team. I don't know why y'all talk about that man no more, man. Hey, he was leading St. Joe. So he one of the reasons with the point guard. Is, uh, I think one of the reasons with Nate is the same thing we talked about with Quentin Thomas, right, Ken? It was like the surrounding guys around that make it easier for that type of point guard, right? Like Quinn, Quinn Thomas had Leon and Deuce and and um Shay and Mondo and and these guys. Nate also had a good starting five that made it easy a to facilitate to starting five. <laughs> a, a hey, great hey, starting hey, five. BP, 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 before hey, you hey, answer, it's kind of like Mark. We it's kind of like Mark Keith was not, not. Yeah, we're not saying Nate was not good. We're we're totally giving him his props as far as he's a good basketball player but what we saying is there's levels and we just don't put them up there with the greats okay so look i'm gonna let you i'm gonna let you have, <laughs> I'm gonna let you have all that but i'm gonna tell you right now i i i match up with nate and go against any of the guards i'll i he can be my point guard i ain't gotta be the point guard i'll be the two and I will take Nate during that time, and I will match up against any of them. Well, do you also That's have Ray Young, Blandon Ferguson, the full serve? Justin, J- Justin J- Davis, J- Andre Brewer. Like, come on. So, hold on, hold on. Why can't it not be that he made them better? He made Because uh, they them all better. went in on you and had get success them the ball. without him, and he didn't. Huh? Yes, he could have. Yes, he could have. No, I said they did, did so role. not not what it could have should have. They did. What do you mean? So Ray went to UCLA, mean? had a decent career. What what did um, Renee go? What 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 did Nate go? They well, one of them went State. to Sac State. One of them went to Sac State. Okay, but I'm saying, what did mean? Come on now. No, but I'm saying, what did they do there? Oh, you want their story? So I don't want to tell all his business, but he made some other choices to prohibit you. him from you. from getting there. But if he would have stayed on track. Oh, don't get no. me wrong. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. You can play some. Nate, 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 is, Nate, Nate was a baller. I'm not going to say he yeah, wasn't a baller. Choice. I understand what you're saying, though. Yeah. yeah. I, he was I, a baller. I wouldn't I put Nate up there with you. I wouldn't put Nate up there with Frank Alaco. I wouldn't put Nate up there with Ayende or Quinn or Armando. Are you even D. Freeman? Deshaun Freeman. Freeman. I, I <laughs> y'all want to start some stuff on here. Hey, hey, we in the rec center. <laughs> hey, hey, man, Allende, hella good, but Nate is the smaller version. Don't get it twisted. Nate can play, and trust me, he just wasn't as big as Allende. Who else did you say? Deshaun Who Freeman, you, you Frank Alaco. I didn't say free, but I see him now. It's my dog. I love him to death. All right. All right. Much props D-free, to all D-free of them, was the Nate... best player on his state championship team. Okay. You don't think Nate was one of the best players on, on his team? But he wasn't the best. D-free Maybe because Ray the best. Got, had the accolades. I bet he was top two. 
I would put Justin Davis over. I take Bullshit. Ray Young, Justin Bullshit. Davis. Uh, should I take Blandon? Ask him. Just ask him. I ain't gonna say nothing. A- ask Blandon. He tell the truth. What up, B. Ferguson? Okay, now ask this him. now this is before my time, and this is just on hearsay and highlights. Was Nate better okay. than? Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. A Mac. What's it? What's his? What's his name? My best friend, Adrian McCullough. Yeah, or even or oh. even Adrian Ely. Oh. Adrian Ely was with, with, with uh with J Kid. Come on, man. That's it's a different era. A Mac and Nate. It depends on what type of player that you want. Adrian's locking your ass up 94 feet. Nate is on the on the offensive side, is creating flashy passes, knocking down shots. So it's a different style of game. But I will compare him to an Allende. He's a smaller version. I give he you a bush ride story. Yes. I'll give you a bush ride story. DeAndre Andrews destroyed Lil Nate Dre? and Renee. Lil Dre? Yeah. Lil Dre? In the bush ride tournament. Don't, destroyed don't, both don't of say he's going to destroy Nate. Don't no, say he, no, he did. It, it happened. Come, where was his at? Where was his at? bush ride tournament. No, 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 no. See, that's that's like Mac. That's different. I'm talking about in a system, high school basketball game, crowd, all of that stuff with plays and all of that. Nate, you have to. It's, it's different. It's different. It is it's different. different game, it is different. Dog. It's definitely different. It's hood stuff, it's man. Def- Nate it's ain't definitely different. Nah, nah. He can play in that, but you know, we get to you. we get to do some other stuff that he might not right want to partake in with the shit talking and one one more word, you know, we're gonna beat your ass and vice versa. Uh, <laughs> you know, All right. it's a little different, man. Don't 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 do that. Don't do that. Don't but but like we said, man, you you came in the era where with a bunch of good guards, man. So shout out to all the guards you named, Nate, um, all of them guys, man. He, like I said, we won't take nothing from him. He was all East Bay, he was all A N G. Was right he? Then. Definitely was, was he? Yeah, first team, first team. Yeah, he was a baller. He was a no, baller. We're not going to take that from him. But there's he, levels. He, he, he can <laughs> ball. Put it like this. Put it like this. If he came to the OEL, I think he'd have been the best guard. In the OEL, his year, he'd have Who been the, the best, best guard. guard. Nate, Nate would have been the best guard. Yeah, he would have been. In OEL, would have been the best. What year? Yeah, his senior who was year. His coach, what ninety eight? Who? What? Who's I'm his talking coach? about. Where's he playing at? No, I'm saying if if he would say he's playing with Clinton, he's playing with Clinton, or he's playing with Coach Mo at Mac, and he's surrounding himself with the Luke Mons and the D Tucks in them, he could have fit in that system. He could have fit in that system. Hey, I give him that. Hey, he's a facilitator like that. Yeah, he can do that, right? Hey, no, but the, the, like bounce, he the, bounce pa- the bounce pass alley oop is by far one of the top plays. One of the best. In the one of the top of the year. Of all time. Yeah, yeah. Create instinctive. But I'm just saying, man. It, 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 Create instinctive. Yeah, but like you said, he could have fit in that system. He have dealt with the hostility two days a week of these people talking shit in I that did, I pressure. I didn't say all that. I didn't say all that. <laughs> I don't know about all that. <laughs> but if we're just at a neutral control setting, I like, and I, you know what, you know what, maybe he ain't, he ain't no slouch. He ain't no punk, though. I don't just know. Saying. I never yeah. met him in my life. Oh, that's okay. That's yeah, I like I'll, Nate. I'll speak for him. You know, he can play. I like Nate. He can play like, stuff. He, he can play. He's cool. So, yeah. Um, so, um, Pete. Your senior year. Now you guys have been in this daylight style since year. You get to your year. Mm-hmm. Y'all go state championship. State championship, right? Y'all played um what's that your junior year? Junior year. Junior year. Junior year, you go to state, state championship. Mm-hmm. That's when y'all played Crenshaw, right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. BP, you dropped twenty eight that game. Mm-hmm. Big big stage. You're a big stage player. You didn't drop you didn't you didn't gave St. Joe's the business. And knock them off. Y'all go to state championship. You drop 28. Big player on the big stage. What was that feeling like? I mean, like I said, man, I, I was just focused, man. Like that, I, my, my mindset is focused. College, you know, trying to get to the league, professional basketball, man. I'm just focused on, you know, getting a scholarship. So my parents ain't got to worry about, you know, paying this and that for, co- you know, for school because we wasn't ready for all that, man. So I was just – focus on getting on the level with Baron Davis's and Earl Watson's and all them, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to just get it, man. So, you know, every game that I played, especially during the playoffs, man, was just trying to be 
the best player out there. You know what I'm saying? Representing Northern California and to be the best, man. So it was it was beautiful, man. Just knowing that I was gaining momentum as a player. I was showing the world, these college coaches and us elsewhere, that I can lead a team farther that you wouldn't think would make it. So, you know, it was just me proving myself, man, showing that I, you know, I am to be reckoned with. Man, it, how, did, how did the recruiting go for you after that state championship? How did your recruiting go? Man, dog, man. A lot of letters, a lot of calls. Um, again, I was um, I was mentioned up there, you know, I'd come out of Northern California with those L.A. dudes, uh, Baron, Bean, Bradley, Augustine, and all that. So I'm with them. Um, coaches, though, UCSB, yeah, St. John's, uh, USC, Colorado, Tennessee, a uh, little bit of St. Mary's, USF. There was a lot going on, man. Um, but I was just – Still just trying to play, man. I got it. I got an invite to the uh, ABCD camp out there in New Jersey. Did that. Uh, being that my co- my team was Adidas, um, I think I think I, was, I wanted to go. I should have went to the Nike one just because that's more guard oriented. Went out there, man, and you know the coaches out there, and they wanted to get to know you a little bit, and it was good, man. Like I said, it was good to know that you are in the same breath as those other players across the country, man. Just being mentioned with them and they want you. And yeah, so it was cool. It was good. It was good. I wasn't where I wanted to be at, but I knew that, you know, all right, all this hard work is paying off. So it was good. What made you choose uh, UC Santa Barbara? I don't even know, man. I was supposed to go to St. John's. <laughs> it's a common theme, my love. <laughs> in New York, in so, St. John's in New York. So St. John's that I heard from Pops and a lot of stories, they recruited my, my, my other brother, Gary, when he was in um, high school. They had an offer to him, and they reneged at the last minute. Oh. I, it's like, same shit. The dude, Francesca, I think it was his name, they was on me. It was hard, calling and talking, and um, momentum was being picked up. Next thing you know, I think he got fired and left, resigned. New coach come in, you know, they want their own players. So that fell off. But I was hot. Anyway, my father left to go with my, with my brother somewhere out of town. And it was during, I think, the first signing period. And UCSB used to be at my, my practices, on my games. There was Coach Wade, man. He used to come to everything. Got in good with my moms, man. All this, man. And I don't know what happened. To this day, man, all I know is I got a sign. I got a sign? No, I'm, I'm hot, man. I'm good. Colorado had just called me. The dude from Colorado, because I think Chauncey Billups went there, he had called and was like, man, you want to come here? I'm like, ooh. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Moms, rest in peace. I love you, mama. She felt that that was the place for me, UCSB. That's she didn't want me too far, blah, blah. I signed on the dotted line and go to UCSB and it sounded good because you know they had, they had the second leading scorer. I can change the program, but for my stature and my accolades and my whatever you want in my profile, um, I was more of a Pac-10, Big East, bigger league um, player. But I chose UCSB. It happened. Um, yeah, we did really well. There. And then the dude that recruited me, he left before I even stepped foot on campus. He left and went to USF. That's crazy. Mm. That's crazy how coaches could just dip out, but players they bound to the to their signature. Well, look, it wasn't like it is now where you just get up and you know you transfer. I didn't, right. you know, if you knew what you knew now, I would have left. I would have left. I would have oh Colorado because Chauncey Bills went there. That would have been a great, you know, yeah, after him. Oh, that would have been beautiful. Oh, that would have been good. You know what I'm saying? But oh, actually, and Utah, Utah wanted me to red shirt. Because they had Andre Miller. They wanted me to red I shirt, knew, I... but I wasn't doing that because my pride, I was like, uh, man, I want to play. You know what I'm saying? But knowing what you know now, like that would have been great for me to red shirt the freshman year. He do him and Keith Van Horn do their thing, and I can come in right after him, make it happen. But, you know, Utah, yeah. Yep, that was true. I forgot about that. But Jerry's dick talk to my dad and all that. Sure did. So then you ended up at Oregon State. Was that your junior year? 
senior year. I senior played year. three years, three years too eight, long eight. at Santa Barbara. I was playing mm. in the Say No Classic in LA, doing my thing. Uh, was going to my senior year, underachieving with the coach because he didn't like me. I got a phone call when I got back home in Santa Barbara. My dad left me a message talking about, look, man, call me back. I got something important to talk about. Called him. No hello. You transferred. And uh, it's my last year, man. Look, I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm balling and say no with Rico and Bluefenthal. I'm doing good, man. I'm, I'm balling out here, man. It's going to be all right. No, no, no. Bring your ass home. You got a meeting with, uh, with Gary and um, – AG, blah, blah, blah. They, they want you to transfer. You can transfer. Where? Just come on. All right. So I get home, and they tell me, man, Oregon State. That's where you're going. I said, no, I ain't. I told your ass that I'm trying to get out your, your shadow. I got my right. own name. You've been going here, man. I got to deal with all this again. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Look, I will take care of that. They got a new coach. You go there. You change the program. You average 12 and 7. Uh, you got league action. 12 and 7? Let me see who in the league. Who's, who's in the uh, Pac-10? You had Jelani, you had Gardner, Capono, Granville, I think he was at uh, USC. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So I red shirt, and that's how I got there, man, on a promise that. That's all I got to do. It sounded good, Pac-10. You know, you'd be on TV. I got the name. Um, my peers know that I can play. I just need the, the platform to really do what I do. So I have to bet on myself again. It's funny you said that, it that, that your peers knew you could play. I was listening to a podcast today with Gilbert Arenas. Uh, and he Ooh. shouted you, Gilbert Arenas, Agent Zero, he bought oh, you. Arenas? Yeah, and he shouted you out and uh, and gave you some props too. So that that was dope. Uh, yeah, I think we crossed paths back in high school, man. He's up and coming. Yeah, that was dope. What a growth spurt would do. That's all I'll tell y'all, man. Yeah, uh. well, I wish I had one. Yeah, we talk about the growth. Hey, we always talk about the growth, man. Me Six too, foot man. and can't dribble hey, just don't don't go well in basketball. Yeah, man, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So hey, okay, so did you but, get the twelve and seven? You want that story too? Hell yeah! Yeah. Ah oh, man, so I red shirt. So my brother told me, you know, and this is this is why I love my family, love him. You know, he kept it, he kept it very real to me when he was talking to me that year. He was like, but look here, man, your shot is good, but your shot ain't consistent. You gotta think about that. I said, I score and shoot better than you, dog. He said, look, it ain't about you and I. Just think about it. Your shot is good, but it's not consistent. Get your shot consistent. Say, what do you mean? You need to be able to wake up no matter what time of the day and be able to hit eight out of ten from any spot on the floor. Okay, so that's what I had to work on my red shirt years, making sure my shot is consistent. I had everything else, um, but just getting my shot consistent, that's what the league is about, being consistent. So that was a preparation. So I got on the gun out there, man, was going in my red shirt year, traveling with the team, playing two on two, get to my playing year, you know, it was my show. I, got, I earned the trust of my teammates, um, the city, the coaches you think. I'm averaging about, I'm putting up 20s, exhibitions, and, and preseason. We go to Alaska or Hawaii, one, one of them, and play against Texas and Johns. And D. Wade was out there. And dude holding his own, playing good. We come back from that trip. The coach sits me. 20 straight games. Whoa. 20 straight games. Games like, like no explanation. Like DMP. DMP. If I did play, I play like two, three minutes. So you look at my average. I'm averaging about three points on a minute or two. Wow. Twenty straight games. My senior year. The only reason why I went there is because y'all told me y'all wanted me. Y'all bothered me. I don't know y'all. I wasn't fucking with you. I said that. So twenty games. We got five games remaining in the season. The day before that game, two of our best players quit because we was losing and the way that they treated me um, during that season. Coach calls me in, 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 in pregame or whatever, ain't talked to me in, in a month or so, man. It's just flipped on the boy. 
man, I'm sorry for what I did, yada, 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 yada. I hope you're in shape, man. You're going to start the rest of these games. Five games left, man. And you sit up here and tell me this. You didn't explain that. You just threw away everything that I've been working for, man. You know my work ethic, whatever. So anyway, I'm like, you know what? I'm embarrassing. So our first game is against Portland. Might have been on TV. Drop 20 plus. Next game against Portland State or somebody, another 20. Next game against Washington at our house against Doug Wren and uh, forgot light skin dude, the guard, another 20. Next game against Washington State on TV, they had a guard, uh, left hander Marcus Moore. He was damn good too. Like 23 on that one on TV. Marcus Johnson was, uh, I guess, the commentator and you know, making it a point to point out my situation and how good, you know, the, I could, the player that I could be, me against his Crenshaw and all of this stuff. So, you know, he's giving the boys props and making sure that they know that what happened this year was not – he could play pretty much. He could play on any level. Finish it out. We beat Washington State. Had two games remaining against UCLA and USC. We lost both of those. Still put up some good games. Um, and that was my year, man. That was my senior year. Ain't seen, heard from that coach in what? This is 18 years, man. What is your dad and That's my career. That's my career. Yeah, that's touchy, man, because my man, you know, I ain't, we didn't ever talk about that because this is what they brought to me, but we ain't never discussed that and telling me what could I have done, what should I have done, is it something I could have done to make that happen because I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm facilitating, I'm defending, I'm leading. I'm scoring, all this stuff. Um, I don't know if they expect a different player, but I am who I am. I score and I die. This is what I do. I score and I shoot die. This is what I do. I, I play. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a two-headed monster. I can play the one and the two. That's how I was raised. Don't you want that? I'm, I mean, I, most players can't do that. Right. And my teammates wasn't doing that. They know. But that happened, man. And that was my, that was my senior year, man. It, it hurts to this day because. Where could I have been if I would have been able to show those five games the whole year? I mean, I know, I know, I know I'm being talked about in some draft type of status, right. a tryout or something with those numbers. I know that. And that's all you want. You know what I'm saying? You don't want it to be the what ifs. And that's where I was at. You know, what if, what if, what if. It wasn't that I wasn't good enough, blah, blah, blah. It's just that, you know, you got you to gotta produce. And coaches do have control over a lot. Absolutely. And I ain't into the going to D League and all of this stuff, man. No, I'm good as I'm as good as most of those players. You just said Gilbert and all that. And they I played against these guys and you know, we go at it, we hold our own, and we definitely know that I am was on their level. My opinion, you know what I'm saying? What, it is, what it is. One of the common things we see on this show is the guys getting basically fucked by these college coaches. You know, we had Paul Marigny and Marquine, Tam, Marquine on here, and they were talking about their uh, coach just have feel a certain type of way inside, and the player have to suffer from the way a coach feeling. We, it's a common thing going on, you know? Um, and I want to say that's all in the recruiting, but that wasn't recruiting. They came and got you from another program and brought you here, and then and then – added an extra year to your college career and then played it like that. You know, so we've written these common themes that going on with, with coaches and, and, and when you get there, totally different ball game, oh, yeah. you know, um, did you play after you left Oregon state? Did you keep your career going? Did you try out anywhere? Oh, yeah. You go overseas? Yeah, I mean, I tried yeah, I went to the, uh, I went to UNC, Asheville D Lee. I went out there and tried out. I was ranked uh number one or number two player guard out there. But the politics started happening, man. They wanted to choose somebody local to play in that D League. So I found out early it's a politic game, man. And then if you play in the D League, they already know who they calling up. And I think that first call up was Azabuki, uh with the Warriors. I think he's a commentator mm -hmm. now. So I mean I'm knowing all of this, man. It's the game of it. So it's like, all right, hold on. I went to Portland and started playing the ABA for a little bit of time. And then I had to swallow my pride and start going overseas, man, and getting that money, getting that tax-free money. So uh, it's one of those things where, you know, like, look here, you know what I'm saying? A door closes. Um, you know that you're as good, but that, 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 that battle 
up here climb is not for me, man. I got to get this money, um, take care of my bills, and and just see what I can do out there. So I chose that route, man, and you know did a, did a few years out there and uh, make the most of it. How long did you play overseas? I played about three, four years, man. We did Philippines, uh, New Zealand, Portugal. Did all that. Uh, I was reached. I was. I probably was close to my prime around 05, 06, 07. Um, I went Port. My last stop was Portugal. Uh, felt pretty good. Uh, then I got a call on a Zoom, on a Skype from moms. Said she was tired one day, man, and I just lost the edge. Uh, so I finished my year out off there. Came back in 07, 08 to California, man, and ain't been back since, man. So. And talking to a lot of guys that play overseas, we always hear the stories of the coaches that don't speak English, cussing you out in a language, money coming up short and late, a, a day late and a dollar short. But was that kind of your experience or, or what was it like for you? Nah, nah, nah. Thankfully, I did not. Um, I heard about those stories, agents, agents that I played for those teams that were of course gonna be winning and also paid on time, very respectful. Um, that I can come in and do my thing. So I did not play for some of the bottom feeder teams. I played for some of the top teams up there who know what they want. They're respectful. They're professional. Uh, I was paid on time, man. I asked to be paid in actual dollars. I seen it every first. Ran into the office. Cool. Put it to your pants pocket, man, every month. Right on time. So I did not, I do not have that story um, of not being paid or being on my system, all my season and yeah, but there, it is it is, it is true. People, certain teams, especially if you're not winning, if you don't win out there, man, send you home. You ain't gonna see your check, and then they're gonna give you a plane ticket <laughs> home because you're the American. Ooh. You're supposed to lead that team to victory all the time, so it's your fault. Yeah, yeah. That's the Ooh. truth. Go ahead, love. Brand, I got a crazy question for you. Been playing basketball since you was 10, 11 years old. Give me the Brandon Payton all time starting five. As you had to pick your My teammates. All, your all time starting all five. Time? All time. Of people you oh. play with. What's your starting five with your teammates? Oh, when I play with? Oh, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I'm going all the way back. Look, look, look. Let me See, hear. You know these names. Hassani Shepard. Oh. No. Well, hold on. What 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 position would he be at hold on your team? It'd be my three. Hold on, Low, Where did you go to school at? You went to Bret Hart, right? I went to Bret Hart and then Oakland Tech. What year are you, you like? What ninety? What? I'm ninety eight. I'm a year after you. You know Shamari Beverly. That's Dang. my guy. Baseball player. Baseball his player cousin. Shamari Beverly. His his cousin. Oh, his cousin. I know Asani. I do know Asani. I do know. I do know Asani. He's a year older than Shamari. I know Hassani. Yep. Hey. Woo! Him? I know Hassani. Kamani, Kamani Duncan? Where he played at? Do you research? Yeah, he went to San Leandro. Yeah, my bad. Let me let me go to what y'all do. I don't know what y'all do now. Right, let me stop. <laughs> Joe Barker, no, 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 no. Put us no, up no. on some new names. No, 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 no. no I want Joe, you to educate Joe, us, though. Yeah. Educate us. He's, these are my sister San Leandro boys go first, man. I got a Sonny Shepard and Kamani Duncan, man. Them my dogs, man. <laughs> All uh -huh. right. Then you got NorCal. I got Anthony Woolridge, Joe Barker, and Jules Milstead. I got yeah, to So we know them guys. So we know them guys. Right. So that's your starting you five. Know them, right? I got them. So that's this right now. I'm going to throw in Donnell Morgan. Okay. St. Liz. All right. Got to throw in uh, Sean Farnham. De La Salle. He plays my big man. Uh, ESPN guy. That's my dog. Rashad Floyd. Mm -mm. I know Rashad. My best friend. All right. He played football, basketball, baseball. He's an athlete. He's good. Of course, I got to have my best friend, Adrian Amac. Yeah. We waste no time. Hey, Mac. If I miss any, oh, 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 my bad. And I got to have big, and big Mike Austin, man. Rest in peace, man. That was one of my best friends, man. Them, uh, them, yeah. Hey, from experience, I'm I can't just tell do five, you, man. I, I, hey, from experience, I'm gonna tell what? you when this airs, you're gonna get a lot of text messages and phone calls about guys you didn't name. Trust me. Who I didn't name? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, look, <laughs> you heard Adrian McCullough, you heard Jules, you heard Anthony, you heard Joe Barker that I played with. Those who I played with. That what you said. Yeah. See, I didn't want to go to college Everybody and all that stuff. We talking about town stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about stuff. high school. Talking about high school. High school. Town. Ray Young. Dion, Ray Young. Dion Dion Criddle. Dion Criddle. D Criddle. Hold on. Dion Criddle. Dion no, no. Criddle. Bush ride. Warm it up, Rebels. Warm it up, Rebels. Talk to you. <laughs> Telling you. Fred Shavies. Hey. Fred Shavies. Over Ray Young? Yeah. Over Ray Young on your team? Over Ray Young on your team? Me and Ray only played that. That tenth grade year at St. Joe's, he was below me. Remember, he was yeah, but, but that's a big yeah, <laughs> yeah, but I get, y'all y'all was also in middle school together. Y'all didn't do your high together with each other too, man. We didn't play. You know? We didn't play. We never did play on the same team. I didn't say I would pick him, but you say who I played with. You played directly. Played with. Okay. Then my fair. I played with him. Now I'm gonna always pick okay. Ray because that's my. We no, North Ray. Cal, you know we North Cal. Okay. Okay. So Fred was with the Rebels. Because Fred is the year under you as well. Fred is with the Rebels. Fred, me and Fred the same year. Me and Fred Shavies. Got to have him and got to have Donnell Morgan. Rubbish. Donnell Morgan was Got to have him. Yeah. Donnell Morgan got was it. Good. All right. Was good. St. Liz, right? Yeah, no, he was good. They won state. Nothing they win to say about Donnell Morgan. Nothing oh, to say about did, did, him. Did, 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 did they? He, he, he's good. They they he won state. Did they win state or did they make it to state at St. Louis? Yeah. Division five. They won it, right? Johnson. Uh, they, they, won won it. they 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 won it. You know, mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. state championship by the same St. Elizabeth. You know, small school. You gotta can't yeah. go wrong with that. Yeah, but like Ken yeah. said, BP, you're gonna get a lot of calls. Like, hold on, bro. I, I'm not. It, it it's going, like our it never list. Fails. It's like our list, BP. You know our list. What do you think about our list, BP? <laughs> <laughs> hold on, dog. Cause y'all, y'all like stuff, man. Hold on, dog. <laughs> let, me, let me let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Pull up dog. the list. Y'all crazy. If you can't find it, Ken can send it to you real quick. What do you think about the list? Hey, send it to me, dog. I send it to you right now. Let's see. And remember, B B B. We went from ninety. I got, I got it. You got it. Okay. 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 I'm here. I'm here. No, you good. Joe C. Yes. No, we weren't good when the list dropped, though. <laughs> huh? We wasn't good when the list dropped. Who wasn't good? We our, our list wasn't validated, is what I'm saying, by a lot of people that feel as if their name should be moved and it be certain people on and off the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Brandon's on right, the so- list. So he's happy with it. The only people that no, don't like the me. list are the people that are not on it. No, I mean, but no, Ken. No, 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 we hold I'm, I'm, made a mistake. Like I said, we out, but, it, it, but no, but there are some keep, people I'll that should have moved up. No, we should have had Jules on the list. We said we said Jules should have been on the list and not honorable mention, you know, because of what Jules you know when we look back at Jules thing, he felt he could have been up. His career, you know. Career. Okay. Career. Career. But then I mean, it but was you, like what, what do you base it what do you base it off of though? Like is so it is it potential or is it accolades? So the so so the pretend so the, the list was one, the eye test, yeah. right? And then it was eye test, then it was accolades, and then it was like we didn't have Nate on the list and we didn't have Quentin on the list, but we felt that was part of their surrounding cast, right? So it, it, it was a list that we put together. A, a, a paint name wasn't on the list, which was Zarek. And we heard a lot of things about Zarek should have been on the list. Right? So the list was considered an eye test. We missed out on, hold on, we missed out on Robert Grissom. Rob Grissom should have been on the list. Hold up. Um, Robert Calvin Toby Crit- Grissom. <laughs> we missed out on Calvin Criddle. Calvin Criddle should have been on the list. Um... You know, but that Fremont could have had names, that, though. that Fremont could have had three or five, three to four people on that list if they if we wanted to, right? That that Fremont team, right? Um, so it was an argumentative list, right? But we want to ask VP, who do you see shouldn't be on the list, or who should be added? BP, who should be added to the list? 
Frank Alaco should be on the list. Um, Calvin. Ed Wally. Credo Calibo. Yeah. I'm going off of producing big time at a high level in high school. Big games, not potential. I'm talking about who's done it, who, who is the number one option on the squad. Calvin Crittle, okay. Cali Bo, Robert Joey Grissom, Frank Alaco, Quentin Thomas, uh, Ben Hill at Castlemont needs to be talked about. Um, that's 95, so I'm paying homage to guys that I watched when I was in the eighth yeah. ninth grade. Like, yeah. man, them yeah. folks go. So I seen it. Like, Calvin should have stayed at St. Joe's. He, it wouldn't have been, he would have, yeah, should have stayed there, but he wanted to come on to Fremont. All right, I understand that, but he was a bad man. Joey Grissom mm-hmm. was a bad man, and he was at, they were as good as everybody on this list during their time. The issue so is that it's right top there, 25 and not top 35. Top. So who you take off if you're going to add them? See, I didn't see a lot. I didn't see some of these players, so I can't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to comment because I didn't see some of these players. Like I didn't see Paul. I heard about Paul. Um, Larry Guest was a bad dude. I saw him when I was in college. Like, who this dude right here? He was good. Um, I didn't see Wendell McKinnes, Nick Enswaller, a De La Salle guy, but he was he was a freshman when I was senior. I he, right, he must have did some stuff that I didn't see. He was East Bay Player huh? of the Year. I didn't see that, but all right. Um, it's hard, man. You, you just have to put them on there. I don't know who to replace. Um, Circus King was a problem. That's around, your, that's around your era, so give us that. What you think? Circus King was a problem. So back then, you know, he was called Circus. So my 10th grade year, I think he was 11th or 12th at El Cerrito. And the whole talk was... You just can't let him shake you. Don't let him, don't go, do not let him get past you. So that was my defensive challenge was I'm just ain't letting you breast you shake time and somebody else, but you ain't breaking me. So whenever I played against him, I made a valiant effort. I'm going to give him a little bit of space. He got that thing down. And that was my defense against him. But he was a bad dude, though. Everybody talking about he can't score and all of this stuff, but during that time, he was making making plays. So if you want to take him off because he wasn't a scorer, go ahead and Quentin or put in Q or Cali Bow. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, you can put in Cali Bow, Grissom, Q, and uh, Frank Alaco, most definitely. All that. I will say that. Do you feel our list was a little OEL bias a little bit? I mean, you only going to, you guys can only talk about what you know. It's our job as well, competitors, peers, to, to, to game y'all on everybody else. So, you know, you saw what you saw, and that's cool. But as I'm sure happened, once you put the list out, your phone kept ringing, right? Oh, you know, Instagram went right. crazy. It, it, <laughs> I, I, so, right? So people gonna let my, you know. My wife like, thought I was gonna on, have dog. to hire security. <laughs> you you, you rubbed some feathers, probably. I'm probably sure you did. You know, by people who felt that. But as as a ball player, it's only it's an opinion. It's what you. So all I care about is is what my peer. If my peers say this, that's what for. You expect your peers, the coaches, the referees, the crowd, and if that's what the peers are saying, what the town is saying, what can you say? Now, if you need to validate it, then we can pull up all East Bay, all state. You, know, we can we can show that as well. And if you have that on your resume, I think it warrants you to be a a top twenty five, top thirty East Bay. If you have that on your resume, in my opinion, Absolutely. you gotta have that. I would agree with that. So, so one one oh, of the I'm things that you. one of the thing, one of the players on this list that don't have that because of um, ineligibility reasons, but everyone who talked about him, Keith Wheelwright, no one disputed him being on the list because of 
what he did and what everybody knew his pick was. You know, Keith was a few years younger than you, but, you know, he a bush ride guy, too. Bush ride. Let me hear it. So let me let me let me clear the air with, with Keith real right, man. I'm the one that trained that dude, was working out with that dude prior to his growth spurts. Uh-huh. We spent daily a time, three, four, five years at Bush Rock growing up. So I know this dude. We played every single day at Bush Rock. And it is warranted, but he the one that chose a different path. We cannot be we cannot base it off of this potential. And that's my dog. He'll tell you I'm big bro all day long. But what did he did he play in high school? When I called back home, he wasn't playing. He chose up. All I heard was that he grew to seven feet, but he ain't playing. He he he, he right? was always ineligible, right? He was always ineligible, but no one disputed when they had to play against them before the ineligibility, or even if they playing that bush rod, you know, no one disputed. Okay, hey, first. when I had to play against Keith. He was driving 36s on it, right? So that wasn't a dispute. All that. Uh-huh. And feel like even with, with that, you know, and I was at Tech with him, you know. I was at Tech with that whole group when they came in as I'm getting ready to um, leave Tech. The dude was amazing, man. Like, it wasn't a doubt about it. It just needed to, he just needed to go to class, you know. But the dude was amazing. And then when you see him play in these, even in the Bush Ride tournaments or AAU, he was a girl to be at six nine, you know. So mm-hmm. he was on the list, but that was a debatable okay. one because he didn't accolade. I mean, again, you set the rules, though, big dog. Y'all set the rule. If if I'm hey, but it's, it's kind of like Zarek there. too. It's kind of there too because Zarek had the That's ineligibility thing going on too. He Do you think he should have been on the list? You know, my, he made it. He didn't play enough, and that's my nephew, and I okay. and I watch him. That's my dog. He didn't play, though. He didn't play. You have to play. You have to lead your team. You have to get these numbers and, and the high school games and playoffs and all of that stuff, in my eyes, to be a, a all-East Bay top 25. That's where you get it at. You can't get it as playing in the Bush Rock tournament, even though that's cool. That's for the town. That's for y'all. You know, playing OMBLs and all that. That's cool. But when it counts, you know what I'm saying? 20,000, 10,000 people on the Coliseum floor, Arco, and Mac for a championship at Henry J. Kaiser. You got to win two to get out. What you do? Well, I Talk have to one, you do? I have one of those trophies <laughs> from the Henry J. Kaiser Center. So we uh, add so Ken to the list. Ken, Ken, no, no, Ken is going to the list, BP. Ken got one. <laughs> He ain't going to the list. One of those. Whoa. Talk about it. He ain't going going to the list. Hey, 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 I'm making making my argument, Lo. Hey, hey, we putting you on the list, Ken. Ken got the he got the trophy. I don't. There's some people in the OAL do not got that. Ken, talk your talk your shit, Ken. Talk your shit. What year? What year was your trophy, dog? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. We beat Leon, we beat Q, we beat Armando, we beat Deuce, we beat all them twice. We beat Paul twice. No, they won it. They won it. They won it. They won it. It's not an opinion or like this this happened. Who you have? Who you have? Uh, We had Kenny Kenny Edwards, Edwards, (laughs) Dante Campbell, (laughs) Antonio Williams Parker. Uh, Darius Parker, Jermaine, who both went one. Jermaine. Jermaine Washington, who is greatly underrated, played in college. That's a good friend and, of mine. And Allende. That's a good friend of mine. Yeah, and Allende. The point guard. And an amazing bench. Life, Our bench was easy. off the hook, too. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. So, you had a great team. Yeah. We were the and I'm sure y'all pretty messed together. It all worked, Yeah, right? we were the Pistons. You had a good team, though, right? Yeah, we were the Pistons. Who was your coach? Was it Morris? Um, so Freddie was our Mark Jackson, and then Coach Vieira was the was the coach when we won it. So he was like our Steve Kerr. Everything just clicked, man, and I, I I'm sure everything clicked. You had a good group of guys that got along together. And was Leon them young at that time? It don't matter. Well, I, not I mean, Leon, was, Leon was still number like number two high schooler in the nation. Wow, well, but but the, huh? He wasn't a man. Was he, he wasn't a man. Guy? No, he was unknown. Nobody knew who he was. Okay, okay. But that, okay. I ain't gonna but, knock but, it, okay, like I said. 
You had DeMar uh, say, was it DeMar yeah, say in, in our He was a DeMar say when you're, you still had Armando and um, Deuce. And um, Deuce, they were so, juniors or were they sophomores? No, they was like freshmen and sophomores. sophomores. We got them, young. okay. That's, got a good, them young. that's a good team, though. Yeah. I, I ain't going to knock it, man. I like to give you a little can't. crap, man. But Ohio ain't never won nothing. <laughs> Ohio was never winning in the 90s. No, it was the they first team to win nothing. since like 1940, which makes it even more Whoa, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, what catches me off guard. Like, oh hi, Lord. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Hold on, time, time out. Let's back up. Hold on, Ken, Ken, back up. So the team: Marshawn, Ray Hope, Ed Wiley, Brandon Gilbert, Marcus Colston, Pocky Wade. They never won. They won the regular season, and then uh, Mac beat them twice in the playoffs. Wow, wow. So we give them shit about that all the time. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's that, 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 that's crazy. And but we went Marshawn nine and one, so we didn't even squeak it out like seven and three, six and four. We went nine and one, and we, and the one loss was senior night. It was the last game we could have went ten and zero. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Y'all, we making our claim. Y'all clicked. Y'all clicked. Y'all Why we just, couldn't just, just be good? Why we had to click? Why we had to be? They was young. Why we <laughs> just can't be good? You know why? Because I didn't know. <laughs> only person I knew. You know what? <laughs> Only dude that I knew was Jermaine Washington and Brandon Gilbert. I know them two dudes, so it's just like, okay, all right. I don't know. I'm just talking shit, man. I don't be I know. Man. I just know them I don't two really, dudes. And like, at okay. the end of the day, I don't really care, bro. No, you hey, should. No, you should. You it should. was high because school. Because we do care. Though. It was high school. Hey, I was a football player. Like it, it, I, it doesn't bother me. But you had a, you played a role, didn't you? Well, it doesn't bother me because you can't take it. You can't take it from me. So you can have your opinion or whatever you think, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you can't take the trophy from me. You a champion. You a champion. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad and at that's you. That's not an opinion. I ain't got nothing to say. I'm just mad hey. that they allowed you to win. I'm just mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad <What>? at that. <laughs> Man. They, they probably mad too. And we went to hey, Sports BP. Focus and ate up all that Papa John's pizza. Oh, was it was the only automatic we invited? It's no, good. No, no. I, oh, I, I, I'll tell you that story when I get the Kenny Epi- Kenny Edwards episode. It's a funny. Hey, story. BP, what was the training like with you and Keith, man? Before he had the growth spurt, man, what would you? How were you training him like? You were just dogging him, like on some making him, you know, making him play against Everything. someone older. Everything. So everybody knew that I was going to be at the gym. I was at Bushrod early, late, play by myself working on my game, man, because I was just, just determined and driven. But Keith was a, a regular. You know, that's 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 their area, him and, and Mill and all that. So Keith, you know what I'm saying, we shoot, we have shooting contests from the corner from the wing from top, play one-on-one, uh, run a little bit outside. Um, so we that's like my little brother, man, like, that was my dude. You know what I'm saying? And we just worked out every day and played and played and played every single day. Day. I knew that if I'm there, he's going to be coming at some point. He's a little younger. So that was his it. So when I left, and I think I graduated with the college, and I used to check back in with Deuce and the crew, they were like, man, guess what? Your boy grew. Really? But he was chose, he chose, you know, other we shit, man. You. So whatever. But no, we used to get it in, man. So I wasn't surprised to know that his potential because he had it. I mean, we was going at it, man. Like I said, he was just getting his reps in as well and playing his older guys. And that's what we did. You know what I'm saying? We just passed it on down. And I knew that he was um, absorbing everything that we was going over and stuff like that. So he had it in his game. I'm sure he, I'm sure I didn't see him. I know he could shoot. He had mid range game. He can, I know he can do layups. He will have his moves. He going to shoot free throws, threes, all that. You know why? Because we did that every single day damn day so i ain't surprised um i just would have rather him you know saying this ah stay focused man ten toes down man because that growth spurt that he had god given man that's that's what you want that's what we all wanted and he got it yeah damn so that I, that hurt me when i was you know hearing you know these stories about what he chose to do man so that was ah to this day man like i see him i talk to him man and Give him a hug and tell him I love him, man. But that's one guy, I ain't gonna lie to you. I hear y'all talking about him. I know him. I know him. Before the before the spurt. 
that's my dog, man. And you know, I want the best for him. And I know that he could have, he could have definitely been, um, man, cashing them checks in, man, in the league, man, because he got the he got the size and all that. He was a guard in a seven foot body. KD, from KD, KD, KD. more questions. K, no, I, I call him I mean, every time I see him. I'll be like, you was Dirk before you was before Dirk. Like he was Dirk before Dirk. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm like, dude, I remember in the gym and like, hey, dude, like, I mean, you know, me back in the day, I didn't know him before the girth spurt. So we run an open right. gym. I'm like, hey, bro, go down to the holes. Like you six nine. Nah, nah, and nah, nobody's nah, about nah. to stop you. And he's he shooting jumpers. Nah. And I'm getting mad. Like, bro, yeah. stop shooting. Yeah. You go to the hole, right? But yeah. his jumper yeah. was so wet. It's like, nah, this is what I do. Like, he pulling up. He pulling up. KD. KD, man. Um, but a couple more yeah. questions, BP, before we let you get out of here. So we just talked about mm-hmm. keep, and I feel an environment thing, you know, kind of threw him off. Being being a North Oakland kid, being at Bush Ride, and then coming to Oakland Tech, which had got 3,000 students at the time, it, you know, it's easy to lose focus. How big of a change was that for your life to not be sent to uh, Fremont um, after going to Montero? Uh, you know, I tell, you know, my folks to this day, man, that was the best move for me. It ain't for everybody. So understand, man, I, I'm from Oakland. I'm, I'm town, I'm town business, however y'all want to word it, all day long. But when you try and to be the best you can be, and there's much more to Oakland, man. I needed a library type setting. Um, so D LaSalle, you know, thankful that that came about. For me, you I because I've been around, like I, I went to school with you or Kenny or like I was with Two Bob and and Frank and Leon. I couldn't go to school with them. I know me. I mean, I'm going to be, you know, looking at all the pretty girls, um, cutting class, just trying to, you know what I'm saying, you know, get your tongue, you know, I'm just trying to do some other stuff there. And they allow that there is what I'm understanding because a lot of people before me got caught up in the same stuff. So I'm learning from others that came before me. So I needed to be De La Salle where, you know, you can't fight. You got to take your shirt in. You got to be on time to every single class. You got to get up early morning in the workouts. You know, you got a structure, you got a system. I needed that um, in my life because if I didn't have that, you know, wrong one uh, yeah, I could be doing some other stuff that I don't need to be doing um, that can get me, you know, caught up in some bullshit that ain't me. So, you know, it ain't for everybody, but I definitely recommend, you know, people think about that. If your child needs a library setting to stay focused, man, go out there, man, and get your education. Um, it's going to be top of the line schools. You're going to learn how to teach. You're going to learn how to read. You're going to learn how to write. You're going to be prepared for college. That's so one other thing that the other side prepared me for. Is that I didn't have to, I didn't need to do the JC route. They make sure that all my classes uh, to qualify for any type of school, UC, Harvard. I had all the classes to qualify for that, and that's what they do to get you ready. Um, and that's what I needed because I wasn't going to JC route. Because once you get in that system, man, good luck. It's, it's hard getting out. You, I mean, you're good enough. You can't get to college because you got to go to JC route dealing with the. Nah, man. Nah, nah. I need to go to college. To a UC or to a top Division One, right out of high school, not going two years at JC. Then man, that's no, nah, that's nothing but high school. I'm good. So I chose that. Then when you're done, you come back and see your boys, man. You get back about six o'clock. Ain't nothing going on till six, seven, eight o'clock any damn way. So go have some fun in school and come back and kick it with your folks. If they love you, they respect you. They'll tell you go do your thing. And then we'll be right here when you get back. That's how it should be. Hey, I can't, I can't wait till my son hears this episode and hear everything you just said because you see me in the gym with my son and things like that, and and I also know his I know his character, right? And he can't be in a Bret Hart. He can't be in a um, Edna Brewer. He can't be in a, a, a Oakland Tech for that matter, right? Because so his personality, he used to look at me, look at me kind of kid. So oh, okay. if everybody got to dress alike, you can't look no different. Tuck your shirt in, wear your belt, because the school don't play about that. So that I got to make sure his setting fits where I need him to be at, because he would be the one that could be a uh, – he would be my junior, messing up how I messed up. He is easily mm-hmm. easily um, sidetracked. So I got to make sure his environment stays structured. Um, great, great advice on that. I can't wait to hear this episode 
and things like that. Yes, um, because it's easy when we to get thrown off, you know. And I'm I'm dreading when girls come involved. Like, oh my god, like <laughs> please don't start that yet. I let's get you out first <laughs> before that before that happened, man. So definitely on that. Hey. Um, yeah. So you know how that go, man. Ken, before we wrap up, you got anything else to say to ask BP? Yeah, BP, what you doing now, man? I, I I love what you're doing. So let the public know um, you're doing, a, you know, what you're doing now, career wise, and kind of give us some words to to lead us out. Man, so you know, I've transitioned and I found a second passion, which is being is real estate. Man, I'm a broker associate, so I'm helping um, home buyers buy homes, get them qualified. I'm also helping sellers sell their homes. So. Um, right now I'm a broker associate for the last about 10 plus years, man. So that's pretty much my game. I'm also a mobile notary. Um, and I'm also thinking about, um, ways of giving back to community, man. So I want to get back to this training thing with these kids, man. So that's finding time to do that, man. So that's pretty much me, man. I'm a a full-time realtor, man. So anybody thinking about buying or selling, I would love to interview for the job. I treat this as, as family. I mean, as I want to play basketball, man, I give it my all, trusting, put in the work, and let's make it happen, man. So that's what I do. Yeah, and and I, I'll vouch for you. I remember you were showing a house in the San Leandro one time, and I just popped up on you because I saw this, the street sign. And, uh, yeah, now oh, yeah. you had it laid out. It was showed really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, you were very mm-hmm. professional. Uh, even though we're, like, friends, you, you know, you treated me as if sure. I was a prospective buyer. Uh, and so I mm-hmm. really appreciated that. And so I definitely want to make sure that um, people know that what you're doing is 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 commendable. Um, and then they, they can yes. trust you through the process, man. But, uh, you know, as we head out. Sure. Get, yeah, of course. Hold on, um, Hold on Cam. One, one more thing. As you talked about him being, uh, Brandon talked about being a, um, a broker associate and, uh, and things like that. We're going to plug your teammate one more time because he might be a business partner as well. Nate is also into real uh, real estate with you, right? Renee, Renee Jocks. Renee, okay. the other guard Renee. who we haven't mentioned that much. Renee is also in it. Um, we didn't mention Renee that much, who was also another baller on that on that St. Joe's team. And so how does that work? Like, so you guys in, in your real estate business, man, do you guys still have like the teamwork as y'all did? You know, don't, being a basketball player, like the teamwork concept. So you know. It's always good to see somebody that you grew up with um, succeeding and being a professional, man. So he so happens to own his own mortgage company. So mm. with what I do and what he do, see, he'll qualify the buyers or the sellers. And then after they're qualified, then he'll, when I step in and I finish the job and show the property. So I've been watching him for a couple of years and blah, 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 blah. And then I just reached out, man. And now he is my go-to lender, man. That's my guy because I trust him from our childhood. I've watched him grow and and evolve into this grown man, professional man. So I trust him, I know him, I know his background, I know his parents, I know what he's about, I know he's real. So that's what you need, man. And we out here just, you know, in the community, in the town and elsewhere, man, letting people know as black men that you can trust us, man. We can do our job to the best of your ability. We'll fight for you. Uh, we ain't about that bullshit. I'm my French for the professional side, um, but we are qualified, owning your own business, being a broker associate, a game, mess with us, man. So it's beautiful, man. Like I said, I love him. Uh, he's part of the North family, man, and we know each other. We get to reflect and 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 talk about our kids and all that stuff. So man, it's good working with somebody that you know and that you can call a friend. So that's that's what you want, I think. So it's good. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, man. So uh, just give us some parting words, man, for the for the youth. Um, that are playing sports or maybe not playing sports, uh, but just as a as an adult having gone through what they're currently going through, uh, what what kind of advice would you give them? Uh, first and foremost, man, you know what I'm saying? Respect and love your parents. Respect the elders. Pay homage to those that came before you because we are able, we're the ones that give you the wisdom. Ain't nothing new under the sun. A lot of this stuff going on here, man, we've already been through it, man. So, you know, it's our job as adults to show and give these kids wisdom. So, man, I just tell the kids, man, you know what I'm saying, listen to the adults, obey your parents, man, and just work hard and believe in yourself. Um, and whatever that you do, just believe in yourself, put the work in, and everything else, you know what I'm saying, will fall into place that it's meant for you. That's just my story, man. Put in that work, though, man. It's all I'm about is putting in that work. 
um, and everything will take care of itself. And you'll get the respect that you deserve and you need. Absolutely, man. Well, we appreciate you Absolutely. coming on. Uh, you know, definitely hit us up if you need anything. Um, but yeah, this was a great episode. It was great talking hoops with you, dog. Hey, man, I'm proud of y'all. I feel man. like this is I'm long overdue. Hey, 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 but BP, give me, give me, give, give us a yeah. few names who you want to see on the show. Give us a few names who you want to see on the show. On the show? Shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, put Ray on that thing. Put Ray Young on that thing. Um, Sink you carry on that thing. That's my favorite player of all time. Uh, get a uh, hey, uh, the El Cerrito boy, them little young bucks, man. Get a uh, get Drew if you can if you can get in contact with that dude. He we got, got Jamal Hill coming you, on. We got He's Jamal Hill younger, coming right? on. Yeah, two thousand. No, they just now, said, I heard y'all talking here. about. I heard you talking about the El Cerrito team. That team after me. With Jernigan, uh, Carnival, uh, Javon Harris, and Drew. Hey, yo, them young bucks, talk to one of them. Now, they, they beat us too. by about 20, and then the next year we beat them by about 25. Yeah, I sent them my senior year. They came to the uh, to the uh, the Chris Von Tru. We got them in overtime, but I knew they was coming, man. They was they, they've been breeded together with Calvin Andrews, man, so they was cool. Um, I mean, you can't go wrong, man. Let's get, let's get, go through the list, man, and knock them out, man. Get Blandon on there, man. Get Ray. Uh, let them you tell their stories, man. Like I said, it's a, it's a lot of us. You got to get Ray to. You got a Yende game. You got a Yende. You got to get Ray to come. Hey, get Q. Back. I'll talk to him. I got you. Get Q on there, man. Q would be a great. No, Q's Cause y'all knocking him a little bit. No, we talked to Q. Yeah, no, no, Q's coming on. No, 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 no. Right. Q, Q the bulldog. We not knocking Q. That's like right. that. I'm gonna know. We we all we 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 bulldog. But we gonna bring yeah, Q yeah, on hey. too, man. Get him on there, man. We got Will. You got uh uh for the younger generation, man. Who else I see? Get Kellogg. That motherfucker. Hey, let me tell you about that motherfucker. He was the same <laughs> year around my little brother. Yep. Yep. Uh, they was all about the same year about my little brother. So I used to come back. And um, come back and watch some of the playoff games, man. And I remember watching Mac and Tech or something like that. And he is the he, uh, man. That dude right there, he really lifted my eyes. Like I would love to play against and with him. He played ninety-four feet defense, and then on the other side, giving you the business and talking shit. Hey, yeah. Much respect to my dog, man. I love that that dude, man. Yeah, he was a bad dude, man. I liked him. I knew that he was gonna be something to keep his head on, man. Like he was a bad dude, man. Yeah. So get him on there too, man. He coming. It's West Oakland. Yeah, he coming. Yeah. We, season two. Yeah. Season two. That's, number one, you kicked it off for us. Like season two is kicked off. I told you, you, you Ricky Henderson on this thing. But uh, season two up, is about to be it. off the hook. We got some. We got some guys that are confirmed as that you guys are going to enjoy. But we, but we still got some lady ballers to coming, too. We got some yeah. lady ballers coming oh. on, too. Oh, yeah. And we got some track hey, runners, some lady my... track runners. We got some. Yeah, we go, we going to we go girls, track man. Track. Yeah, we're trying to get Maisha. Got, Maisha Johnson. Maisha Johnson. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Asha. Get the, yeah. Get Asha Leak in there, man. Get, uh, get Damn, Berkeley High Girls in there, man. Get Asha Hey. Lee Esther Anderson from Skyline, one of the baddest females ever. And right. someone hit me and said we need to get somebody from Coach Coach Lola Smith team at Fremont because they were running it when she was coaching there. Yeah. Coach Smith. Get all of them. Girl oh, basketball. Sadiqa uh, Cooper. Sadiqa Cooper yeah. out there, man. Yeah. They're telling so we, 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 hey. we, we Season two about to be off the hook. But we got hey, enough, we we got enough yeah, people for like 30 seasons. <laughs> hey, this can go nationwide, man. Like I said, this can go nationwide. This can go nationwide, man. Make this big, man. Y'all doing a good job, man. Like I said, just keep it up. Work on your craft, man. Get these stories out here, man. And and let the world see, man. The town business out here, man. We for real. We got some talent. We have some talent. Have some talent. All that. Yeah. All Appreciate y'all, man. Hey. All right, man. All right, BP, yeah. man. Take care, man. I see, Lo, I'll see you in a minute. Ken, I'll see you soon around town, too, boy, and Wells Fargo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you ever come to Vegas, hit me. That's where you live at? 
You moved? Yes, sir. Baby. Yeah. I'll call you later on, man. Get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here, dog. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Low breeze. Hey, man. Great episode with Brandon Payton, man. Good one. Good one. Hey, you know what? BP didn't shy of what I thought he would. Nah. Hey, I was surprised, B- too. I thought he was going to be political. Yeah. Yeah, he he, he wasn't political, man. It was something going on that he wasn't feeling, and and, and he betted on himself. You can't knock him betting on himself, man. He sounded like his brother, the way he talked, in the in the the mannerism and the confidence. He sounded like his brother. Great episode, man. Can't wait to hear everybody hear this one with BP. Hey, man, season two, we kicked it off. It was off the hook. I ain't going to lie. I enjoyed it. We appreciate you guys listening. Uh, Subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, The Rec Center. And also, you can find us on Instagram at The Rec Center Podcast. I'm Kenny Edwards for Lorenzo Parham. We out of here.